QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Enter transaction for payroll using bank feeds. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks desktop bank feed practice file going through the setup process we do every time. View drop down, we got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off, open windows, they're open on the left. Reports drop down, company financial, let's open up the P to the L, the profit to the loss, change the range from 010122 to 123122. Customize it so we can go to those fonts, those numbers and change them on up to 14, okay? Yes and okay. Let's go to the reports. Ultra base one more time. Company financial this time. The balance sheet. And then customize it to change that range from 010122 to 123122. And then the fonts to the numbers. And we'll bring it up as has been our custom to 14. Okay. Yes and okay. Let's also open the bank feeds. That's where our focus is. Banking drop down, bank feeds. You got the bank feed center, which would only be there if you turn the bank feeds on, which we did in the prior presentation. Then I'm gonna go to the unrecognized items. We're focused now on the payroll. So we gotta give it just a, a general overview of the payroll to think about the complexity, re complexity related to it with regards to the bank feeds. So let's go back on over to the home page and there's two primary ways that you can set up your payroll. This is important for you if it's your business. It's also important for you to think about how you might structure your bookkeeping system uh, and who you might work with in order to structure your bookkeeping system. So and you want to also make sure that you if you have employees or you're starting or you're thinking about taking on employees, one, do they need to be employees? or should they be contractors? And if they are employees, then uh, should you be accounting for them inside of QuickBooks, which means you usually have to turn on QuickBooks and usually pay more for uh, QuickBooks to do its thing? Or do you want to be paying an outside service to help you handle payroll? Now, if you're a bookkeeper, also you wanna be thinking about that and say, okay, do I want to try to automate my system with the bank feeds possibly and work with outside uh, third party payroll providers so I can then have a system that will be automated and then have a nice networking system with an outside party, which will be my go to kind of setup? Or do I want to wa uh, do the payroll within QuickBooks? No matter how you set it up, if you put the payroll within QuickBooks, you're going to be deviating from a simple cash based system based on the bank feeds. You can't just record a transaction for payroll from the bank feeds and use that as, as your recording of the transaction as you can with other outflows. In other words, the payroll, you can think of it as just like the vendor cycle, money's going out. If you were on a cash based system with money going out, you would be using the bank feeds to write in essence a check form checking account going down with it, the other side going to some expense account like telephone, utility, so on and so forth. That would be the same thing with employees. You would just be saying, here's a check and that's for payroll expense. But then you got the government that came in and just totally messed everything up, requiring things like withholdings and whatnot and other human resources requirements and reporting requirements and 940s and 941s and W-2s and W-3s that need to be reported and so on and so forth. So you have a whole lot of uh, added complexity, so much so that payroll has become kind of a specialty in and of itself. So that means that if we do the payroll within QuickBooks, we would have to process the payroll and then match it to the bank feeds as the, things, as the payroll clears the bank 
or we could try to stay in a, like a cached based system and see if we can work that out with a third party provider as they process the payroll, deal with the human resources, deal with the W2s and the 1090 and the W2s and the 940, the 941 and so on and so forth. Okay, so first, how would you turn on payroll? You go to the edit dropdown, preferences, and we can go into the payroll items, which is right there, and then company preferences. Now, normally you're gonna have, you're gonna have to pay for payroll, and you, I won't go into the detail for the tiers of paying for payroll, but just note that you're gonna wanna, if you run payroll within QuickBooks, pay for the payroll, because this, although there's no one thing in payroll that's com complex, meaning calculating social security withholdings isn't hard. FIT calculations are harder, but not that hard for each individual. But when you add all those calculations up, the, the likelihood of making a math error or something like that becomes quite high if you don't have software to help you out. The software also helps out with the quarterly reporting and the yearly reporting, that being the 941s quarterly typically, the 940 yearly typically, the W2s yearly typically, and the W3 yearly typically. Just so you can see how it works though, without having to pay for the added item, let's just turn on the manual payroll and we're gonna say, uh, no, I'm just gonna say next and activate. And then manual payroll has been activated. So if I close this, now we've got this line down here. If you don't have that arrow, that line or that arrow, then you don't have payroll turned on. If you do, then you've got some kind of uh, payroll turned on. Now, if you process the payroll through the QuickBooks system, then what's gonna happen is first, you can enter the time. It's not a required to enter the time because you might track the time somewhere else with regards to the payroll processing. And then you're gonna process the payroll, which means you, at the end of the day, you're gonna make the payroll checks or the electronic transfers to the actual employees. And you might do that depending on how you set up the payroll. Whenever you choose the common way to do that would be weekly, you know, bi-weekly, semi-monthly or monthly. This will, at the end of the day, generate the decreases to the checking accounts, which would be a type of check form, but a special type of check form, and also give you the withholdings, which usually create a liability. So those liabilities become accrual kind of things, which means they're gonna mess up our bank feeds, right? So they're gonna be liabilities over here for social security, Medicare, uh, federal income tax for the employees, FIT. So. So then we're going to have to then, after we process the payroll, pay off the liabilities, which is the pay liabilities form, which is going to then, uh, once we do this, make a check form basically, but it'll be a special widget form, check form that will decrease the checking account and then lower the liabilities that we increased when we processed the payroll. So if you have everything set up properly, that can run pretty smoothly, but it doesn't, doesn't, it means that we can't just use the bank feeds to record the transaction. How does the bank feed fit into that process? Well, we're gonna pay the employees and then after we pay the employees, at some point afterwards, we're gonna then pay the liabilities to the government and whoever else we have to pay liabilities for, like a, like health and health insurance and so on. And then those things are gonna clear the bank. So if I go into the bank feeds, we're then gonna have to match the payment here using the matching item which will often kind of do this automatically. If everything ties out properly, the system will kind of be able to, to see the match and it'll tie it out and we could just match it. Therefore, the bank feeds are being used not to create the financial transaction, but rather just to help us out in essence with the bank reconciliation process, tying out our books to the bank's books. So we'd be more in a full service accounting system with regards to payroll. There's no way really around that due to the complexity of payroll and the need to use the widgets and so on if you're going to process payroll within QuickBooks. Now, the other way you could do it is say, okay, maybe I'm gonna try to say, I want to make my internal books on a cash-based system as best I can. And then with regards to payroll, I'm gonna work with a payroll provider to do all the other stuff, meaning provide the stubs to the employees, W-2s, uh, W-3s, 1099s, or I'm sorry, 941s, 940, preparation and so on. And then they're gonna give me the information just that I need uh, in order to 
make any adjustments periodically. So how might that work? So just so you can get an idea of this for your own business or possibly if you're a bookkeeper, how might you work with a third party and try to keep everything as simple on a cash based system as you can and then maybe make periodic adjustments for small businesses possibly only at the end of the year so that your financial statements are correct on whatever basis is needed either a financial basis if you have financial reporting but possibly just for a tax basis so you can properly record your taxes so you might say if we process payroll usually you get you get a form looks like this something like this that uh, this is a simplified kind of register or payroll register and let's say we have these two employees adam and erica here and adam earned on this payroll four thousand five eighty three thirty three and then we took from adam social security medicare and their income tax these are the common three federal taxes we would take we could also take from adam voluntary withholdings like insurance and and so on uh an ira 401k i mean so this is so this is the calculations i won't get into the calculations but the net pay would then be this minus these three meaning what adam earned minus social security medicare and income tax therefore the net check that would go out is three thousand five twelve seventy one. that's what adam would get uh and then we on our side also have to pay another matching of the social security and medicare for our payroll taxes as the employer and then erica let's say our other employee made 800 dollars social security withheld medicare withheld that means she's going to get a net check of the i'm sorry and then the income tax withheld a net check of this 628.80 and then we have to pay social security and medicare on top of her payment that is in place and so and then we can total these up now note that you can kind of imagine when we record this into the system as if it was a journal entry by journal entry transaction in other words if i enter the transaction for adam we would say payroll expenses for the full amount but he only got 3,512.71. That's the decrease to the checking account. And then we would increase the liability of the 1,070, which represents the withholdings that were taken out. And then Erica received 800 payroll expense account. Then she only got uh, the, the 628.80, the difference being Social Security, Medicare, federal income tax in this example or we can think of them as kind of clumped together as if they're just one employee so i can use the total column and i can say well the total uh payroll expense should be 5383.33 and then the amount that came out of my checking account in total was 4141.51 and then the difference is the total withholdings that that were taken out the 1,241.83. So, uh, so I could like periodically make adjustments based on these registers that are given to me and put them into the system to make my financial statements correct, but still uh, not have to deal with the with the recording of the pay stubs to, every, to 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 each of the employees, and they should be able to process then the quarter 941s and the 940s. Now, if I wanted to be on a cash-based system, I might say, well, why don't I just wait till everything clears the bank? Because it's only basically a timing difference, meaning I have the third-party person process the checks. I'm going to see this check and this check clear the bank feed, right? So when they clear the bank feed, I will see them over here in the bank feeds and possibly I just record them like I normally would if it was just a, a, as if I was paying a vendor and that would just say, okay, there's going to be a decrease to the checking account. The other side's going to go to payroll expense, right? And so that will not be exactly right on an accrual system because what actually happens, you'll note here when, when, when this person got a check is that even though the check is that amount, we actually had a liability and accrual component of this, this liability that increased or in total, this liability that's going to increase. But then we're, we are, of course, going to pay off that liability shortly. So if I have the 
third-party payroll provider processing the payroll, when they pay off the liability, then of course that will clear the bank and I'll record, I'll record that as basically payroll expense again uh, at that point in time. And I can group them both into basically payroll expense, not breaking out payroll expense and, and uh, payroll tax expense. So that would be the, the simplest thing to do on, on our, and just be dependent on the bank feeds. We just wait till everything clears the bank and then record it as basically payroll expense. Then at the end of the year, what, what, we're, what we're going to have to do is at least for taxes, record our books that would be appropriate for taxes. So if there are any adjustments that need to be made on a yearly basis, we can provide our tax preparer or our accountant with the registers that are given to us by the third party provider, and they can adjust for any accrual components, any payroll liability that needs to be recorded, as well as any, any uh, breakout between payroll expense and payroll taxes, if that's necessary, based on the reports, just periodically, right, at the end of the year. So we can think of, of the adjustments from an accrual component to from a cash basis to an accrual basis or to a tax basis, whichever is needed periodically. We can do that at the end of the month or the end of the year. And that allows us, if we wanted to, try to make our books still comply with a cash based system and try to just automate the whole process uh, as easily as possible and then just do those periodic adjustments at the end of the year. So that's a system that you could think about setting up if you're a bookkeeper that might be an easy kind of system to set up so that you can you know automate everything and still have a workable uh, process to make any periodic adjustments at the end of the year and then work with a solid uh, payroll provider that you trust and then work with a solid uh, accounting firm to help do the tax preparation and make any adjustments at, at like the end of the year so that's one way that you might think or a couple ways you know you might want to think about how you can then set up the payroll and then of course uh when you enter it into the into the system here let's just see a payment maybe i won't enter it but i'll just look at one and i say we have a, a payment let's say this was like a, a payroll check even though it's a small uh, dollar amount we can then just record it to payroll expense right we'll just record the other side to payroll expense and and uh even though this is a net check and not the gross check and then when the payroll liabilities are paid let's say this was a payroll liability i will still just record this basically to payroll expense because when i pay off the payroll liability i note that when i pay off the payroll liability it includes both the employee and employer portion of the payroll taxes and really the only part that i should break out as the employee as, as payroll taxes versus payroll expense is the employer portion so so it's not going to be easy for me to break those two things out between payroll expense and payroll taxes on a cash based system but i don't really need to because again i'll just i'll just put it all to payroll expense and then i'll let my accountant at the end of the year do the adjusting entry and at, at, at the end of the year to adjust it to whatever basis is needed i'll let the payroll provider deal with any human resources providing the payroll stubs and making the making the quarterly uh, payroll tax returns and the yearly returns and the W-2s and so on. So that's one system that, uh, that you can think about. Payroll often throws a wrench into the, into your whole process. So you want to make sure that you set it up right the first time. If it's your own business and if you're a bookkeeper, you want to think about what's my default system that I can, that I can set up and what kind of network can I be working with to make this as efficient, you know, as possible.